Hello and welcome to the iSolve Time Force job tracking product demonstration. Today we are going to be reviewing the job tracking aspect of the iSolve Time Force solution. iSolve Time Force is a time collection system that will allow us to collect time either as a standalone or as a part of the full suite of products we offer which includes payroll, HR and benefits administration. So for purposes of the demonstration today we're going to begin by logging into the system as an administrator. The administrator controls the rules and policies and settings in the system. Specifically let's move to the job tracking section and talk about how this works. Initially we need to create the number of levels of the jobs we're going to be tracking. A quick example here is I might have different projects that I track. Within those projects I need to know the specific jobs that are being performed and maybe there are work orders associated with those jobs. So I can create the levels, label them anything I'd like, but we need to establish first how many levels of tracking we're going to have. Obviously an organization might only have a single level but from there they could have as many levels as are necessary. In addition to jobs we have what are called tasks and a task is the specific task that's being performed on the job. A simple example of this might be something like building a home. If I'm building a home I need to know what tasks are being performed on that while I'm building the house. So for example uh, putting on the doors and the windows or painting, roofing, drywalling. These are specific tasks. Tasks are typically um, items that are reused across any job. So any job that's out there would have the same tasks underneath it. That's the idea behind a task. So now we're going to be tracking jobs and tasks. There's a number of ways to do this. The first is at a physical time clock, an employee can go up to the clock and press the job button when they're starting work and in indicate the job they're working on and then if necessary indicate the task they're working on as well. From a software based the employee could also log into the system and the employee using one of a variety of methods can go into the system put in a pin code and then indicate the job that they're working on so they could specify a specific project Within a project, if there's a job within that and within that, and they can drill down as deep as they need to to be able to capture the information. So they can do this from a physical time clock, from the web, and could also do it via our mobile app for smartphones, either using an iPhone or an Android device. Now let's take a look at some of the end results of what we've captured here. So I'm going to go to the time management section here. We're going to go to the time cards. And we're going to find an employee who has some of this on their information. So John's our example today. John during the day clocks in and clocks out. As he does that, each of these entries can have a department, job, task, etc. associated with it. So we're going to capture as much detail as we need to there. So as he clocks in and out, the system totals his hours up for the day. It takes those hours and categorizes them as regular, overtime, etc. And then it'll break them up where the hours were worked or what they were worked on. So in this example, I have the employee working in a couple of different departments. Then under the job tracking section, we can see the breakout of the hours and the different projects, or in this case, a project and a task that the hours were associated with. Now there's a variety of methods to do this. We could have the employee capture the time or we could have a manager or other user simply allocate the hours after the fact. So the employee might go to a clock and just punch in and punch out for the day. Then their manager would go in and allocate their hours. There's a couple of ways to do this. One is by individual and one is by group. For this we typically use what we call the spreadsheet hours entry screen. 
And the spreadsheet hours entry screen is a configurable screen. We can show as much or as little information on here as you'd like. And the system will remember the detail that you've entered in. From there, it'll take the days of the week and it'll break those out and show the number of hours that were worked. And from there, I can either take the existing hours and allocate them to different jobs and tasks, or I can add or adjust the hours any way I'd like. So let's say, for example, that I want to break that eight hours up like this, where there's two hours um, in each of these segments. And then from there, I'd go in and select the various jobs. Now the job list that we see is configurable by user, so a specific employee, for example, may only be able to work on certain jobs. So I go ahead and make those changes and save that, and then back on the time card we'll see kind of the result of those changes where now that eight hours for that day has been distributed across these various uh, jobs and tasks. Now, that's a little bit about the creation of the jobs and tasks. We're seeing the employee experience there. But there are some other things we can do associated with the jobs. And let's dive into a little more detail here. First off, on any given job, we have the ability to associate what's called a premium pay code. And a premium pay code is basically a rate that is associated with a job. We'll talk more about these in just a moment, but the rate typically would be something like, well, if I work on this job, I receive $10 an hour, and I work on this other job, I receive $11 an hour. But the system can calculate more complex rates, for example, piece rates, where if the employee produces a certain number of widgets, they get a certain rate. And we can also take rates and pay the greater of the rates involved. So for example, I might have a, a journeyman rate here, and then I might have a piece rate. The system will look at the two rates and apply the greater of the rates, whichever, you know, based on the um, scenario that the employee worked, whatever is applicable there. To create the rates, we've got a couple of options. Rates can either be employee specific or they can be job specific. So for example, if I go to an employee's position record here, and under their rates here, I'm going to go to their pay level, and I'm going to hit Add Pay Level, and I'm going to tell the system, effective August 1st, if the employee works this level, then they receive this amount. So in this case, I've got something here called Pay Level 3. So let's go ahead and save that. And I'm going to create another one here, and I'm going to do this for pay level 4, and I'm going to create that for $12 an hour. You notice I'm on John's record the whole time here. Let's move to the next person on the list. And for this person, I'm going to add a pay level and say, as of August 1st, Greg, when he works pay level 3, he gets $15 an hour. And then from there, when he works pay level 4, he gets $17 an hour. So the pay levels are simply nameable objects within the system that we can then tie to the job. So if I go into my company management and go in to set that up in the system, in my settings here under system customization, I go to the pay levels and I can relabel those. So pay level 3, for example, I might relabel that to be job 3. And pay level 4, I might rename that to be job 4. From there, I can establish rates associated with that. As we saw earlier, we can do it by the individual, or we can go in and create more on the global level type rates. So for example, everyone who works job three gets a, a specific rate. To do that, we'd create what's called a pay code in the system. And this is what's called a premium pay code. And for um, ease of use here, I'll just name this job three. And then I'm going to tell the system I'm going to tie this to a job. 
and then I'm going to tell the system what the rate is. So my options here are pay multiplied by a factor. So take whatever the employee's currently making and give them time and a half. Or pay plus a premium. Take whatever the employee's currently making, pay him an extra dollar fifty, or a flat rate. And we'll see this quite a bit with jobs. So if you work job three, I don't care what your base rate is, you get fifteen dollars an hour. From there we could also pay a flat amount or create a formula as well. So I can have as many uh, jobs as I'd like in the system. I'm just going to add an abbreviation code in there as that's required. Now anyone who works job three will get the amount that I specified. So we can do that either in an individual basis or based on the uh, job that they're working. Now let's go ahead and take a look at some of the results of the jobs. First off on the job tracking screen there's a job summary and I can select any given job or project and specify a date range and the system will show me how many hours have been worked on that project and who worked it. So let's just select the first one on the list, hit display, and at the bottom of the screen now it's going to pull up everyone who's worked on that job, the specific job and then the tasks that were performed, and the total number of hours. Now this is just a snapshot view if I want to see how many hours were worked on any given job. I can go in and run a report to get greater detail. In my report section, I've got a variety of reports. Let's use our job analysis report as an example. First off, I'm going to go ahead and fill in the dates that I'd like to see. For my example, I'm just going to back this up a year. We don't hide or archive the information, so if you wanted to run it for a longer period of time, you could. You can run it for any date range you'd like. From there, I'd select the employees that I want to see. If I want to see everyone, I simply don't select anyone. Or if I want to see just certain people who have worked on a job, I'd select them. By default, the job reports will show all hours that have been worked by all employees, but you can specify whether you want to see just active or inactive employees. Then I'm going to choose what's going to show on the report. I could go in and specify the tasks that I want to see. I can filter down to the specific job that I want to see or simply view all jobs. And beyond that, then I can go in and uh, filter the report any way I'd like. For example, I've got a sort here by job, then within the job the employees who worked on it, and I can push this out to PDF, Excel, Word, or uh, Open XML. For our example today, we'll generate that out to Excel and click Generate. And when the report's ready, I'll simply click Open to pull the report up in an Excel format. I'm going to go ahead and pull this over here for us to look at. And basically the system's taking the time, broken it up by job. So here's my different jobs. Within those jobs, the people who worked on the job, and then the type of hours that were worked, etc. So if there's any overtime hours, regular hours, um, and then pay information, again, an option in the system. You could turn that on, turn it off. Some people like to collect it and view it in reports. Um, some organizations don't utilize the pay. And that's something you can turn on or off in the report options as well. So we'll see a checkbox here for the pay information. You can decide if you'd like to turn that on or turn it off. Now, we do have other reports associated with jobs as well. In addition to that, the system also comes with a report writer, so you could write and design your own output as well, associated with uh, the jobs and the time collection in general. Now this concludes our brief overview of the iSolve TimeForce job tracking product demonstration. If you'd like to get some more details or schedule a one-on-one -on -one presentation, please contact your sales representative.